Well, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to our DTS trading room. I hope you had a nice break in my absence. I know I had a very nice break, thank you. But now it's time to get back at it. Hopefully I remember how to do this. <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. Uh, all right, so the markets uh, just opened up. And what we're looking at here is the NASDAQ. For those of you new in the trading room, I tend to focus on the NASDAQ. Uh, but I'd be happy to take a look at any market which is of interest to you. I'm also following gold and crude oil. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here this morning. Seems like a fairly quiet uh, opening for a Monday. Uh, last Friday, it looks as though the market, a little bit of a roller coaster. Pretty big move down out of the open, a little bit of a recovery going into the close, and more of the same this morning. So we have a fairly well-established trading range. with our highs up here and our lows down here. Working on a possible uh, trend change here on the Eagle. I'm looking at this wondering whether this is going to be more of a bear flag type thing, you know, where the market's moving down. This kind of a little bit of a bear flag. We're going to see a break and the market perhaps head lower. It's possible, something to keep a lookout for or whether it's just going to continue ranging back and forth. Um, at any rate, even if it ranges back and forth, we should see it try to recover here to the lows. Technically, I suppose we have a little bit of an opening gap above the market here relative to where it left off. So let that play out. I'll adjust my Raptor settings while we're doing that. <clears throat> a little bit of a double bottom. The Raptor kind of showing us the trading range perhaps a little bit better. I would say the trading range is looking something like this. And uh, I suppose even a tighter range would be this one in here. All right, let's see how they they handle this, this sideways congestion. Like I said, pretty quiet for a for a Monday. Oftentimes Monday we'll see the market almost run right out of the gate. Not so this morning. The market's still in vacation mode also, I guess. Uh, gold dead sideways. Here's gold on the eagle. And not a whole lot going on since the open gold opened up right here. Has just been drifting sideways for the most part. Okay, so we are seeing a little bit of a move higher now. Like I said, probably getting into that opening gap. Crude oil also pretty quiet. Ah, thanks, Tony. Tony says there's an important news out at the top of the hour. Just one second while I check my news. And 
What's out at 10? Oh, new home sales. Yep, that could be important. That'll spark a little bit. Okay, so I guess we did get a first micro macro cross right here on the hawk. I missed that one. And it looks like it did have a, well, enough of a follow through at any rate. So those of you who were concerned about the market not filling that opening gap this morning, you can, you can breathe a little easier now. We might need to let him go for a little while here to get a little traction. Let's take a look. I'm just going to build a daily chart. Here we go. So here's the NQ on a daily chart. And you can see, well, I guess if we shot a trend line, <clears throat> pardon me. If we put a trend line sort of across these highs, you can see we're kind of flirting with the highs here. This is what's really kind of significant though are these lows see this is the first time since this swing back here in mid-february where prices are actually threatening to make a new low that's important if these lows fail here we can probably expect a fairly well i'm not going to say substantial but we can, we'll expect a move lower. Whether or not it will retrace all the way down here, I think 4,000 is a reasonable reset. That will give the talking heads on news plenty to get excited about. Uh, 4,200 I think is a given. Uh, but a full-on retracement down back down to the lows. That would that would definitely be substantial. So this is what we're keeping an eye out on from the longer term perspective, if you will. So put that away. So they're, they're back near the highs. And we'll see whether or not they flinch here now. I'm not going to look at buying in at this level. You can see here on the Falcon how nicely we're pinched between the median line and the primary support.
nice failure here of the uh, cell signal. It was a um, full-on cell signal off of the primary support, essentially a trend change signal, which failed. It did not move lower. And uh, the failure of that actually turned into a early trend change signal to the upside. Technically, yes, this is a trend change signal right here. Um, you can see the problem with this one, though, is the structure. We have highs to deal with back here. We have the median line if you're following the support and resistance suite. If you don't have it, well, you still need to take into consideration that you're at the top end of a, a trading range. Normally in a trading range, we don't want to buy the top end. We want to sell the top end. We want to buy the bottom end. But if you're saying, hey, it's a signal, I should buy it, it's a trend change signal. Well, yes, you are correct. However, you're going to need to risk it fairly deep because this is your structure right down here. And you may or may not be able to afford that. If you can, fantastic. You'd currently be long, sweating the trade a little bit, uh, looking for an opportunity to adjust your stops. So if we get a couple of green bars forming here, another run at the high, I would strongly advise taking your stops from down here and rolling them up underneath here, and perhaps even starting to roll them bar for bar. Might be turning into a late filter entry signal, actually. Typically, at quarter to the hour, the market seems to throw us a curveball, kind of a sucker pitch, to see if we're going to try to jump on it. So macro pullback signal. I guess it's tough as well this morning because um, we are range bound. All right, well, no. I was going to say I'm going to dip my toe in the water. I should dip my toe in the water on this macro pullback signal. <clears throat> that has a little bit more uh, likelihood to it in that we would need to retest the highs before a possible failure. And there was enough room in here to, you can see, retest the highs and still make a scalper's profit. So there's the retest of the highs. Now we're floundering a little bit and possibly heading a little bit lower. So I'm going to put that on the shelf there for the moment. When in doubt with these trading range type scenarios where the market where you suspect the market may be stuck in a sideways range, remember the best course of action is just let it break out. Let it break out somewhere in there. It will retest and then let it come and uh, produce a buy signal. Likewise, to the short side, let it retest and come and give you a sell signal. I might try a soft edge sell here, only because I do suspect the market is in a sideways trading range. You can see we're getting some overlap in prices here. We're just kind of drifting sideways for the last 
10, 15 minutes. Oh, the hawk already starting to introduce yellow bars. The falcon working on a possible trend change now to the short side. More of the sideways drift. Yeah, the market's really just content to stay in a sideways range right now. Sorry, I was looking around elsewhere. I'm, doggone it, I missed my um, soft edge cell signal here on the Hawk, or Raptor. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So a little soft edge cell, quick little move to the hard edge. Stops would go above the highs. Here's a first micro macro cross, which is a second chance at that same signal. You can enter right here on the hash mark, or if you prefer, you can enter below there. Entering below the low enables you to run a slightly tighter stop, I think, because what you're looking at is a little extra momentum to bring you down. And we should be able to get a little bit of a scalp out of this. There we go, hit the break even. There we go. So a nice little first micro macro cross signal there to capitalize on with the with the hawk. And that soft edge cell here on the raptor. 
Okay, so a little soft edge cell right there. Remember the soft edge cell, not to get too excited about those, because they are counter trend. They can have very good follow through, as you can see, but they must always, always, always be preceded by a test of the extreme. They must always be fall, uh, preceded by a retest of the high, in this case the high, and then a failure. The market actually showing you it can no longer support higher prices. And then the market comes back. We produce our sell signal. And then we're free to sell. This one's a little bit more uh, protracted. Very often the signal develops a little faster like this one did down here. This is a soft edge buy signal right here. Here's the signal for those of you who can't see it on my chart very well because of the, the lines. There's a soft edge buy signal and it too was preceded by a retest of the low and you'll see a nice little run up. And it helps to use a little bit of common sense as well because, like I said, the, the market is or does seem to be in a sideways trading range. Therefore, if we are uh, looking to sell near the top and buy near the bottom, it helps keep us on the right side of the trade as well. Okay, one down, one for the good guys. Crude oil still kind of plodding along sideways. And only about seven minutes to the news release. We'll see if that sparks the market a little bit. So far, things fairly quiet. Quiet with a chance of bearishness. You can see here on the Falcon, we are right up against our primary support again. Uh, crude oil uh, tried there for a moment to put in a little bit of a rally. Here's crude oil on the hawk. And uh, you can see a lot of yellow bars. And again, you know, if you draw a line through your yellow bars, you get this 
flip-flopping effect uh, some traders refer to as barbed wire just to emphasize the neutrality of the market. Uh, we did get a first micro macro cross signal here, which did have some follow through, but even in crude, it looks as though, oops, wrong tool, but you get the idea, a uh, little bit of a sideways trading range. All right, possible macro pullback working here in the Hawk. Possible trend change here on the Raptor. Oh, sorry, just missed a macro pullback signal, but I can still sim it for you. You're probably going to want to risk it a little bit deeper in case this develops into more of a pullback. I'm going to try this falcon slash raptor trade if it prints we're getting a cloud crossover now here on the raptor Or maybe we're not going to get a signal until the news release. You can see her on our Geiger counter, the market very, very balanced. shelf there for now. We'll clean that up a little bit. Uh, might get a four arrow consolidation. One, two, three. Here's signal number four. Kind of putting all my eggs in the bear basket. Oh. Macro pullback keeps adjusting, slash four arrow consolidation. I really just want to do a onesie on this one. One sec, we'll change that. There we go. So all I did was flip into manual mode. And uh, what I'll do is I'll delete the profit objective if we get filled to the short side. And see if by some chance we can't run this one out. Okay, the news should be hitting the floor any time now. New home sales will be more of a impetus to the uh, Dow and the S&P, but the NASDAQ should pick up some of the overflow. So the four arrow consolidation here on the Hawk, it has that nice little bear flag shape to it, which is what we like to see. Oh, now we're into yellow bars, so I'm going to scrub the order. And now we're getting a green bar sell. Last chance for the sellers.
keeps running away on me. Still a green bar cell. Let's see whether or not we can nurse this one a little bit. If I can get a couple of bars moving here in my favor, there we go. I'll enable the stops now. Reduce my risk. Here we go, we hit the break-even trigger. Come on. See what's holding them up is this right here. Got some buyers fighting what they pres presume to be a, a support trend line. All right, so we would have hit our profit objective had I left it in play. Let's see if we can catch a lucky break here. Come on. Come on. That's all right. It it didn't cost us anything. Well, short of a commission to the broker, but the break even plus one will cover some of that. Looking at some buy signals now here on the Falcon, we got a buy signal. The Raptor, we got a buy signal. And the Eagle also producing a buy signal. But the market's still not in trend mode. You can see here, according to the trade forecaster, we're in swing mode. And in about a minute's time, we're going to be moving into scalp mode. So... Uh, I guess we can expect more of the same sideways thrashing. Crude still very, very neutral. Lots of yellow bars on our Hawk in crude oil. We're into the hard edge on the Eagle in crude oil. So it's getting pretty close to decision time for the crude oil market, whether it's going to rally or whether it's going to tail off here a little bit. All right, so here comes another sell signal. Uh, again, this is just characteristic of a market flip-flopping back and forth. Uh, we're going to hopefully get a red bar buy signal out of the hawk here, which I will look to short the failure of. We already got a sell signal here in the Raptor. I suppose we could enter it on a second push below the low of this current bar. 
You see how this bar is retreating? It filled the the signal, and now it's retreating a little bit higher. Well, if it takes out this low, then you can expect that the market will have a little extra momentum to it. It's not always a bad strategy to follow. Okay, I guess we'd better get some stops in play here. At least to start. And what we're looking for is a, a retest of the, the lows of the morning. Looks like the new home sales didn't exactly motivate the market or the NASDAQ market too much one way or the other. So going to be some buying going on down here around the 44.53 mark and there's evidence of that right now. As traders try to maintain this trading range, in fact I'm going to put my stop above this swing high just for starters. Come on, come on down. Ay, 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 ay. Don't like it when they're taking their time like that. then on the shelf Tony has a question Tony asks or he says welcome back well thank you Tony good to be back uh, yes when you have time let's say we're short four contracts and the market is moving in our direction how do you add more contracts to your trade well if you're asking just the nuts and bolts of it probably the easiest way to add additional contracts is you can preset your quantity size up here. So let's say you want to add an additional two contracts. You could go now into manual mode. Let's say you were going to short two contracts below this low. Right click on your chart and sell two. That's the easiest way to add more positions to uh, an open trade. If you're asking where should you add more positions, well, traditionally, when the market is making a new or breaking a previous swing point, uh, alternatively, you can use additional signals that your tool is producing. Let's say you're following the Falcon. And let's say you bought here. You could add another position right here. 
and likewise you could add another one right here. It's not a bad way to trade because what it does is it gets you in with less initial risk. Let's say you're looking at this. It's the first micro macro cross and you're saying, hmm, should I do it? Well, go to manual mode. We'll throw a onesie on it. Um, and, you know, we'll structure it. We'll give it a decent chance. We'll structure it like this. And what we'll do is I'll delete the order or the profit order if we happen to get filled. And we'll look at adding to the trade if it moves in our favor. Now, a good idea if you're going to try to add to a position by adding, you know, a contract here and there, is make a note of where your entry point was. Because what the trade manager is going to do is it's going to start averaging your entries. And you may lose track of where you actually got into the trade in the first place. So we're going to get a fill there. I can actually set this one up already to short an additional contract right here. Trade Manager will make the adjustments on your stops. Okay, so we're short two, and you can see Trade Manager um, added the additional contract to our trailing stop. And then when we get another swing point, let's say it trades a little higher here, and you're still confident about the short position, well, then we'll add another sell below the next swing point. Come on, come on, take out the low. Prices are just so flat. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I mean to say is there's no momentum, right? You can see we're just kind of stuck in the same same range we as the trade progresses I'll probably end up switching to the parabolic strategy there we go we'll move to parabolics now okay so here we have yet another little swing actually you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial this back a little because we're going to try to run this out a little bit. So notice we have another pivot here, right? That we've got another little swing low. We could add another sell below this swing low. So that will make us short three contracts. You need to be careful when you're doing this that you don't overcommit yourself. What I mean to say is we're not at break even yet. 
right? So this is all risk. We have $245 at risk. Um, this is very real risk. We're still playing with our money. Once we get them, actually I need to draw another line there and another line here. Um, once we get our positions into a break-even situation, let's say we roll to the first break-even, that means, oops, sorry, the second one was right there. Once we roll to the first break-even, that means there will only be two contracts moving against us. So let's say I force the trade to break even now. Oop, that's not what I want. I want it right there. Now we have three open positions. One is at break even. The other two can still move against us. So you can actually find yourself in a position where if you are too heavily leveraged, you can actually lose money, right? Because we've got two contracts moving against us right now. This one for, that we entered down here, this is a, a bigger loss because, you know, we're losing money from here to the break-even trigger. This one is less of a loss. We're losing money from here to the break-even trigger. I'm still going to roll them back here. We're going to try to ride this out a little. Normally, I wouldn't enter additional contracts that fast. Usually, you look at major swing points. So I would enter one here. This is starting to look like a more significant swing point. I would enter one below here. I wouldn't. Oh, and that was our initial entry. So... If you're looking to add to an existing position, try not to get too excited to pile on those orders too early. All right, so we'll we'll just let this one play out a little bit. Um, the the big deal was the first micro macro cross, which came down, hit its profit objective. But let's get back to our Raptor trade, which we should probably take to a break-even situation. So we've hit our first profit objective, regain the lows of the morning, it looks like. And now they're testing the bottom end of the trading range. We'll see whether or not, or we'll, I guess we'll see what the market does with that. So pressing lower into the lows of the overnight. All right, now if we can see them take out the low, which is where we're at right now at 44, 48-ish, we'll probably see the market drift to around 44, 40, which I believe was very close to Friday's lows. Yep, right down here, 44.50. 
4430. I would think 4440 would be a decent short term target though. The trading equivalent of watching paint dry, but at least the market's moving in our direction, which is a bonus. Adding to a position is obviously much easier to do when the market is in a trend versus what we're looking at here this morning. Come on down. Like I said uh, earlier when I showed you that daily chart, if the market takes out the lows uh, from last week, we can probably anticipate the NQ to enter a little bit of a bear phase of the market. Um, note, we also had a trend change signal here on the Falcon about the same time we were getting our Raptor signal, and it too was challenging the lows. So you can be short the Falcon also. The trend change occurs when the trend line goes from green to red. You get this down, up, down pattern. Okay, a little bit of a reaction now to the bottom end of the trading range. Pretty much what we would expect.
little sideways drift. I'm taking a look here at crude oil at the moment. Um, let's see which one. I'll bring the hawk over. So crude, uh, a little bit of sideways range, lots of yellow bars. Came out with a first micro macro cross. Decent little move to the short side. Now it's consolidating again as uh, buyers and sellers are trying to assess whether breaking that support of 43.50 was a good idea or not. Good morning, Jim. Jim says the advanced decline is pretty lopsided. We've got 450 on the buy and 2,000 on the sell. Pardon me, 750 on the buy, 2,000 on the sell. We'll see whether that translates into the market pressing lower from here. So our trade is almost to a break-even situation on, well, sorry, it is on a break-even situation for the first two contracts. Not quite to break even on the third yet. If we can take out this low here and maybe slip to the 4440 area, it would be fairly easy to get the trade to a break-even. And let me see what support line is in that neighborhood. Uh, look at that, 44.39 quarter. So 44.40. A probable target as well, according to the support and resistance suite. And maybe we'll just take a look at getting out of our three trades at that point. So we'll get out at 44, 41 quarter. Why be greedy? Come on. Somebody get in there. Sell those lows. There we go. Come on. You know you want to. Look at all the volume here. See the width of the bars? There is a lot of market participation at these levels. Lots of buying and selling going on. Okay, so more of that sideways drift. If you're short, you might want to consider cozying up your stops a little. See, the ATR stop is still way back here. Uh, you may choose to go with something a little bit more aggressive, maybe something like parabolics, which would have our stops in above the high here. Actually, that's not a bad idea. We'll do the parabolic. If they fail at that point, we may as well take our money. Let's see, what do we have in open profit? Yeah, see, that's enough. That's worth protecting. There we go. It was a non-issue. As we saw a little slip below the lows there, and now hopefully the sellers will continue to push. Or as my friend Ray Burke always liked to say, Bush! What a pretty 
pretty sideways sort of day so far. Sideways with a downward drift. here on the Hawk trade. If you are following this type of trade, you have an opportunity to get your trade to a break even. Oh, stop it. Well, you get an opportunity to get your trade to a break even on that last contract. So now you have all three in a break even position. Two of your contracts are profitable. Your third one is at break even. Now you're pretty much playing with with their money. So you can see the end result worked out pretty well. Uh, we were profitable on two of our contracts. The third one got tagged at break even. And we'll see here in a moment whether or not that was a good idea or if I allowed the swing strategy to continue to control the trade. If that would have held me in or not. And no, it wouldn't. So it was a it was a good call. Uh, getting stopped here at the trailing stop would have meant that two of our positions would have been winners. One would have had a slight loss, so it actually would have offset a little bit of our profit. So as it turns out, we did pretty well maximizing our profit on that particular trade. Hooray for us! We'll put that back on the shelf. It looks like we got tagged here on the Raptor trade as well as the market backed up into the Parabolic. So that also a pretty good trade. So not a bad morning considering how quiet it's been.
All right, just snooping around a little bit. Doesn't seem like there's uh, very much going on here at the moment. Still a lot of sideways trading. Uh, Jim says, let's see here, I'll pull up a YM chart. Oh yes, we've got a pretty broad cloud here on the on the Dow. Possible soft edge buy signal. We've had a little itty bitty test of the extreme right here. We'll see whether we can produce a soft edge buy. Jim says he's already long at 07. So he took a little bit of heat on the trade, but he's looking for the market to recover part of this cloud. We got some buying going on. Let's see if we can't get that dial to swing over and hold. Okay, Tony's got a question. Tony asks, um, regarding managing a trade, over the last week the volume has been low on the NQ. I've had four contracts short, the market moves down, hits profit objective, Ninja sells three contracts and leaves one short. How should I manage that situation? Uh, are you asking, Tony, what you should do with the runner? With that one runner that you still have? In which case, I would say, uh, just take it to a break-even situation, and if it goes, it goes. Oh, Tony says it was not a runner. So did you, did you mean to exit on all four? In which case, if you meant to exit on all four, Make sure that your targets are set up correctly, that you don't have anything left as a runner. Okay, Tony says, yeah, I want it out on all four. Uh, make sure that your profit targets add up to 100. So let's say if you're not going to be all in, all out on target. Oh, targets are at 100%, Tony says. Um... Well, I wouldn't have thought that four contracts was enough not to get filled exactly where you wanted. Uh, but if that happens, then your only recourse is to hit the close button and force the rest of the position to, to flatten. Yeah, look at you, Tony. You're moving. Tony says there's not enough volume to get the fill on all four contracts. Tony is a market mover, folks. He's a player. <laughs> um, but I guess it can happen if the um, if the volume really is that light that you can't get a fill on four contracts at a particular price, force the trade. If it's only letting you out on three or two, force the trade uh, to close. Just hit your close button. You may incur a tick slip, a tick or two but at least you'll be flat. All right, so how are we doing? No, oh, not bad. It's... kind of in the doldrums again. Apparently, according to Trade Forecaster, we're actually in trend mode, but you wouldn't know it. Moving back into scalp mode, 
near the top of the hour. So it looks like today going to be a pretty much let's sit here and watch it chop around kind of day. All right, things looking pretty good for Jim here as the market, the NQ anyways, making a little bit of a retracement. Jim's trade. We don't have a signal just yet. Jim's a little bit more aggressive in this respect, and that's fine. You know, it's it's your money, folks, really, at the end of the day. Um, but what Jim has been doing is he's been tracking these clouds, and when they get really overextended, the market tends to become, in this case, very oversold and you would look for a little bit of a retracement and likewise if the band gets extremely wide to the upside well, there's not a very good example right now but you would expect the market to be very overbought and as such it should head lower so here's a again the type of situation where the band starts to get uh, at least on the ym about 55 to 70 ticks wide and somewhere in there you would anticipate that the buyers are going to start to step in and so here here too so we've got a band that's ranging from 178.50 down to around 177.90 ish that's a pretty big span uh, sellers are starting to chew into the market though that's not good We'll see if there's no follow through from that, then that tells us that the buyers are actually picking up all that slack. All right, we'll put the YM back on the shelf for now. And here on the NQ, things are kind of hit the skids. We've got yellow bars here through the Hawk. Uh, you can see the same kind of sideways congestion pretty much across the board. The Raptor looking kind of dull. Uh, the Eagle really not doing anything this morning. And the Falcon uh, mirroring the Raptor. I've been concentrating mostly on the Raptor, but really we're just getting all this overlap. I can't really see taking another signal here until things start to shake up a little bit. market a little bit of a downward bias the raptor here showing us a 
kind of a bear flag type scenario. That is a legitimate cell, by the way. It's a hard edge bounce coming out with the cell signal. But like I said, the momentum is just not there today. Oh, hum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tony asks you if I, uh, if I saw a clip of our Prime Minister here in Canada giving a snotty reporter a lesson in physics, no, I didn't. One thing when you're uh, away on vacation, you tend to spend very little time in front of the television set. or even on the computer. I had a crappy internet connection where I was, so there was no way I'd be able to host the trading room, even if I were so inclined. Here's the YM again, starting to get a little bit of traction now. We don't have a, uh, a soft edge buy signal just yet. But it does look as though they're trying the Geiger counter pulling over pretty hard to the buy side. Look at that, they're pulling and holding and holding. That's a pretty good sign. Oh, that's not a good sign. We don't like to see the sellers ganging up on Jim there, but... Hopefully, it will continue to move a little bit higher for them. Uh, I'll have to check it out. Tony says it's probably on YouTube. All right. I will give it a, a look-see. Tony's already got the link for me. I don't know if I can copy and paste out of there. interested in knowing what Tony's talking about, there's the link. And you know what, you guys, I think we're going to button up the room here. Uh, I don't anticipate any really big 
price moves this morning. Uh, we are getting a first micro macro cross to the upside. We did get a trend change signal here on the Falcon. I personally, I think my day is done. Um, it seems more likely that the market's just going to keep floundering back and forth within this trading range that it seems to have established for itself. Uh, if it does move higher, I could see 44.67 being a stumbling block. And after that, uh, it should have a difficult time getting above 44.80 today. To the downside, 44.40 still seems like a very plausible target if prices continue to slip, which would be my guesstimation today because the market has been paying off to the short side. I don't think I'd get too crazy about being a buyer just yet. All right, you guys, uh, we're going to close up the room, and I will see you again tomorrow morning, bright and early. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now.